Okay, everyone. So we talked about target points, lines, and areas last time. So let's jump in again. Now, today we're going to talk about the turn of the 3, 2, 1. Why 3, 2, 1? Well, target points can be used to establish all of your datums if you need them to. However, how many do you need for each datum? Well, if it's the primary plane, you're going to need three, three points. If it is the secondary plane, you're going to need two points. And if it's the tertiary plane, you're going to need one point. So if, you, if you're in data feature reference frame, you have something that looks like this. Okay, I'm going to... Well, then you would need three for this, two for this one, and one for this one to actually establish it. Why is that? Each point gets rid of a degree of freedom. Your first plane gets rid of three degrees of freedom, so you need three points. Second gets rid of two degrees of freedom, you need two points. And third gets rid of one degree of freedom. Okay? You will need dimensions to tell where these little targets are. You can't just put them on there and say, it's there. X marks the spot, boom, good enough for me. No, you actually have to show them where it is with dimensions. Dimensions at basic, mind you. Okay. And once you've done that, you label it with the datum target symbol. Now, how does this actually look? Well, if you're trying to simulate these datums, I um, must note these three little points you see right here, those are pegs with a dome top. You see them from the side right here. So all these are just little pegs that have a domed top. And that is how you simulate um, a target point. At least it's one way you can do it. Um, as another thing, when you have a curved surface like this, you gotta be very careful because only the tangent point actually touches, and so you're gonna have to be very careful to make sure that your point, that's the tangent point that's actually touching the surface is actually located correctly. Otherwise, you know, if you're supposed to touch here, and I have my nice rounded surface, well, it actually touches here. So you gotta make sure that you're very, very careful with that. Even if it looks like it's perfectly aligned, it's not gonna be touching there because of that tangent point. Okay, target lines. We can also use lines to establish datum. Now, how much does a line actually constrain? Well, interestingly enough, it really depends. If your line is your third datum, then that line is going to have to, is only going to constrain one degree of freedom. However, if you think about how many points does it take to draw a line? It takes two. It takes two to draw a line. And so it can, if used correctly, constrain two degrees of freedom. Okay? When we're drawing this line, we use a phantom line. That is a line long, two, two, sorry, because long, two shorts, and then long. <laughs> long, two short, long. You do not use long, short, long. That's a center line that's saying that there's an axis there, which isn't true. You don't use a solid line, you don't use a hidden line, because all those are telling different things that aren't actually there. Once again, you will need to define where this is located. If you don't, it's not good. Um, there are some cases where you wouldn't need to, but it's only if it's just perfectly obvious based on the geometry, like there's no ambiguity. If there's ambiguity, you don't do it. Okay, now how do we simulate this? Well, if we're looking at our previous example, we still have all of our pegs, our three, our two right there. But now we're going to say, well, I want to have a line datum, like we showed in the previous drawing. There's our line datum right there. And a line is usually created with a cylinder. It's just a simple cylinder. You're not having to make some like perfect wedge that touches it at only one point. A cylinder will do that too, because only the tangent line will actually touch the surface. Now, there's only full contact if it's a perfect simulation and a perfect part feature. So that doesn't happen all the time, but hopefully, hopefully, um, you're gonna contact enough to constrain it in the way that it's supposed to. Okay, finally, target areas. You'll see them right here. These are not perfect circles with a solid line. They are actually having a phantom line that's then hashed in. So long, short, short, long, short, short, and then I hash it in, okay? 
Now, areas can, by themselves, constrain three degrees of freedom. However, if I've got a very long workpiece and I say, okay, I want you to constrain it right there. That's my area. That's, of course, going to perfectly constrain it. It could, but you want to make sure this makes a lot of sense if you're holding it in place. And so you would probably want to establish a second one, and maybe even a third in the middle, just to make sure that it's not going to bend under the force it would require to hold it in place with just that area. So you have to think about stability. You have to be realistic. Like, how would you hold something? So sometimes you're going to have more simulators than you technically need. Okay, you have more than you need just because you're trying to be realistic about how things can work. Like someone could definitely balance it on just two, but three is gonna make sure that's completely stable. Okay, so that's it for this time. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you all later. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.